especially a good evening to you watching online. For our special Ascension worship, worship this evening, I am running the PowerPoint tonight, so you have to bear with me in case slides don't click. I may have to run or get close or, um, or figure it out. So just bear with me tonight as we work through that. All of our hymns also, uh, Alan can't be here with us tonight, so I'm also doing sound and, and making sure everything's running, which it was before I came down here, but again, I just have to double check it all, so you have to bear with me again. Which case, Alan had recorded all this music, and it's going to be played like how we normally would do it in the evening, um, except for, again, we're trying to make sure music also gets broadcasted across Facebook, too. Uh, so again, just please bear with us. This is actually our first time now doing this, well, with me solo doing it, so please... Um, be patient and bear with us as we worship our ascended Savior tonight, the significance of that for us. You know, we tend to go from Easter and everything else, but really we can't skip over the ascension. It's very important for us. Um, so tonight we're going to be going through a brief service of uh, prayer and preaching. Um, you follow along as you can, uh, response three parts, uh, hymns and then prayers and a little message in there as well. We begin singing our opening hymn, hymn 493, verses 1 through 3 of a hymn of glory. Let us sing. rise. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ is risen. Alleluia. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Christ has ascended into heaven. Alleluia. And he will come again. Alleluia. Clap your hands, all you nations. Alleluia. 
Shout to God with cries of joy, Alleluia. How awesome is the Lord Most High, Alleluia. The great King over all the earth, Alleluia. God has ascended amid shouts of joy, Alleluia. The Lord amid the sounding of trumpets, Alleluia. Sing praises to God, sing praises, Alleluia. Sing praises to our King, sing praises, Alleluia. For God is the King of all the earth, Alleluia. Sing to him a psalm of praise, Alleluia. God reigns over the nations, Alleluia. God is seated on his holy throne, Alleluia. Christ has died, Alleluia. Christ has risen, Alleluia. Christ will come again, Alleluia. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. There we go. I'm going to be doing the readings from down here so I can watch what's on the screen. Our first reading for tonight is from Acts chapter 1. In the first book of Theophilus, I have dealt with all that Jesus began to do and teach. Until the day when he was taken up, after he had given commands through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen, to them he presented himself alive after his suffering by many proofs, appearing to them during forty days and speaking about the kingdom of God. And while staying with them, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You heard from me, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know times or seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. And when he had said these things, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and the cloud took him out of their sight. And while they were gazing into the heaven as he went, behold, two men stood by them in white robes and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus, who was taken up for you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle for this evening is from Ephesians chapter 1. For this reason, because I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and of revelation and the knowledge of him, having the eyes of your hearts enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power toward us who believe, according to the working of his great might, that he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead, and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him as head over all, things to the earth which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance and forgiveness of sin shall be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. Behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you, but stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he blessed them, he parted from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and were continuing in the temple blessing God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Continuing with our responsory. Forever, O Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens. 
Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Now as we've been blessed in the one true faith, by the same power of the Holy Spirit, we confess now with each other and to each other, with that same Spirit, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now we join in singing our voices to our ascended Lord with hymn 492, In Christ's ascension I now build.
Grace, mercy, and peace be to you all this evening from God our Father, our Lord and Savior, our resurrected and ascended Savior Jesus Christ, and our helper of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A lesson for consideration this ascension comes from the book of Acts. In the name of our risen and ascended Jesus, dear people of God, Alleluia! Jesus has ascended and ascended. He has risen and ascended indeed. Alleluia! Well, tonight we take some time to commemorate the ascension of our Lord. All of our readings for today speak to that event. Our first reading from the book of Acts is the most detailed about his ascension. The gospel connects the ascension to the ministry of Jesus after he rose from the dead. The epistle tells us that Jesus is now seated at the right hand of the Father. Or for the apostles, this event was the bookend of Jesus' ministry. Peter described the ministry of Jesus this way. All the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us. So Jesus' public ministry was from his baptism to his ascension. The ascension is one of the milestones in Jesus' ministry. And the ascension is such a milestone that we might be tempted to think that now this is the end of Jesus' ministry to us. We might be tempted to think that Jesus' work of salvation is all over, done. We've seen the Son of God descend from his throne in heaven and all of his might as to be born, as a little baby boy. We've seen him patiently love and care for the people who were around him in spite of the fact that he was perfect and they were sinful. And we have seen him teach with his words and with his healing touch to all the people gathered around him. We have seen him lift up the heavy burden of our sin and carry it to the cross. We have seen him die in order for, so that we can live. We have seen him rise in order that we might then live forever. Who could blame Jesus for now wanting to retire to heaven and do a little bit of landscaping, a little bit of remodeling, a little bit of preparing the place for us so that everything is just right when we come to live with him forever? And while Jesus is indeed preparing a place for us in heaven, there's actually a lot more to his ministry than that. See, the ascension does not mean that Jesus' ministry is completely over now. It only, min it only means that Jesus' ministry to us has changed. Now, our experiences in this world, especially everything going on now, they kind of govern the way we expect things to happen around us. And how everything is going now, they really dictate and shape how we think and do things now. Well, for example, you know, we have seen balloons ascend. You know, a little kid loses a balloon at the park, or you fill one up and let's go, you know, with healing, I should say, even air. You know, it flies up, they go up, and they're gone from sight. They're gone, completely gone. You're not getting them back again. Well, Jesus went up. He disappeared from sight. We expect him to be gone, but he's not. Before Jesus left, he said, Behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. He had said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. He has not left at all, but he has disappeared from our sight. So he can be with us in a completely different way, beyond what we could even imagine. You know, we saw this when Jesus came and died for us. Jesus dealt with our sin by becoming one of us so that he could take our place. Jesus suffered the temptations of Satan in the exact same way that we did. But unlike us, he never sinned and he never succumbed to those temptations. He allowed the Roman soldiers to nail him to a cross and he gave up his last breath for us. And while he was on that cross, he suffered the full punishment of our sin in our place. He endured all of that in our place so that our sins would not be charged against us, so that we would have the righteousness of his holy life, to be deemed holy and right in the eyes of God. He endured all of that so we could once again enjoy the full blessing of God's presence with us. And when Jesus finished paying for our sin, he rose from the dead and showed himself for 40 days to his disciples. He left the tomb without bothering to move the stone away from the door. 
He had a conversation with two of his disciples and then simply disappeared after he broke bread with them. Later on that same night, he suddenly showed up in a locked room in the middle of his disciples. He did exactly the same thing a week later and had a special talk with Thomas and well, all the disciples, really. And he came and went and appeared and disappeared as he will. He was always with the disciples, but they could not always see him. He got them used to the idea that even though they could not see him, he was always with them in a different way. This is the true meaning of the ascension for us. Jesus is with us even though we cannot see him. The humanity of his physical body, along with his divinity, have truly fulfilled all things on our behalf. He is always with all of his disciples, all of the time, in all places. So the eternal presence of God with us means that Jesus is always with us in his full divinity and his full humanity. The very body that has the prints of the thorns in his head, the marks of the nails in his hands and feet, the hole of the spear in his side, is with us even though we can't see him and actually physically touch those things. In a way that we can understand all of his forgiveness, all of his love, all of his comfort is with each and every one of us in the body of Jesus Christ, sacrificed on the cross and risen from the dead. So the ascension means that our crucified and risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is indeed with us always and forever. Jesus is really present with us. And that was the theme of the National Youth Conference last year. Real, present God. The real presence of Jesus means that it is Jesus who serves us in his divine service. When the pastor forgives our sins in the name of Jesus, the real, pr real presence of Jesus means that it is Jesus forgiving your sins. When we hear the word, the real presence of Jesus means that it is Jesus speaking his words right to us right now. And when we receive the sacrament, the real presence of Jesus means that it is Jesus forgiving loving and comforting us in his true body and his true blood in, with, and under the bread and wine given to us to taste and feast on. Christ has ascended to fulfill all things. He not only just dwells in heaven, but he also dwells with us both as God and as man. He is still Emmanuel, God with us. He continuously brings us the gifts that he earned for us with his life, suffering, death, resurrection, and ascension. He is with us with his real love, his real forgiveness, his real comfort, his real hope, his real salvation, and his real eternal life. The ascension of our Lord means that the God-man Jesus Christ is fully with us even if we cannot physically see him. The good news is that the day is coming when we will see him face to face. While the disciples were gazing into heaven as Jesus went, behold, two men stood by them in white robes and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking to heaven? This Jesus who was taken up for you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Jesus will come back again. We will see him face to face. But until that day comes... We can rest in the insurance that we are never alone. Christ, our Lord, true God and true man, is always with us. We have his forgiveness. We have his love. We have his hope. We have his comfort. And we have his strength. Even now with all this going on in the world. And the world and everything involved in it and Satan and diseases and everything will do all it can to separate us from him. It will discourage us. It will attack us. It will persecute us. But Jesus himself warned us this past Sunday, in the world you will have tribulation. But nevertheless, he also said, take heart. I have overcome the world. The one who 
who overcame the world and everything going on and everything that's involved in it, and overcame Satan, overcame our sin, ascended into heaven to fulfill all things. He ascended so that he could be with us to the end of the age. For now, he is with us always, even though we can't see him. And at the end of the age, we will see him face to face, and those who believe in him will see him for all eternity. So this night, when we commemorate the ascension of our Lord, let us always remember the comfort we truly do now have and will always have forever. Jesus is not gone, but is with us always and will return again to bring us into the eternal home that he is preparing for us now. Jesus is always ruling over our lives and ensuring that we are constantly saved. So tonight, especially, you know, it's a beautiful night here in the UP, we gaze into heaven, believing that we are loved, forgiven, and comforted. Because Jesus has risen and ascended, he has risen and ascended indeed. Alleluia. Amen. Now may the peace of God our Father guard your hearts and minds in our risen and ascended Savior, Jesus Christ, as he fills you with the Holy Spirit to see that he is not from us, but is with us always. Amen. All right, we continue with the prayers of the church, and you notice it's a little different response from what we normally have on a Sunday service. For this ascension evening, that as Jesus Christ ascended into the Father's presence amidst the clouds, and now reigns over the nations and sits on his holy throne as our victorious Savior over sin, death, and the devil, he will increase in us patient trust as we continue to wait for the fullness of his glory to be revealed. When he returns again in clouds of glory and establishes a new heaven and a new earth, the home of righteousness, let us pray to the Lord for our salvation, that we rejoice for the Father sending his only Son from his pure and kingly throne to take up our flesh and blood, and that by his Holy Spirit his name may be kept holy among us as we teach his word in purity and truth and live godly lives according to it. Let us pray to the Lord. For God's precious gifts through what she continues to dwell here on earth, that God guide his church to faithfully use these gifts, his word and his sacraments, to proclaim repentance and distribute forgiveness to all people, tribes, and nations. Let us pray to the Lord for all who are ill and suffering in any way, that their hearts be lifted up and be drawn to God and to his promises of forgiveness and life everlasting, and that they be reminded for Jesus' sake God hears their prayers and continues to blanket them with his gospel's embrace. Let us pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, your Son came from heaven to enact your plan for our salvation. Perfectly completing this plan to the point of death and burial, he returned to you as our mighty Lord, who sits above all rule and authority and power and dominion. Rejoicing in his victorious resurrection from the dead, we draw strength from his ascension before you where he ever stands for us as our own high priest. Gather us together from the ends of the earth to celebrate with the angels and archangels and all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. For you, to you alone we give all glory, honor, and worship, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, our God, now and forevermore. Amen. Almighty God, as your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, ascended into the heavens, so may we also ascend in heart and mind and continually dwell there with him who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Blessed Lord, you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and take them to heart, that by the patience and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our ascended Lord and Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, our God, now and forever. Amen. Now we all join in praying Luther's evening prayer together. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. 
and I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to always boldly pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you all. Amen. We now join us singing verses 4 through 6 of hymn 493, a hymn of glory let us sing. Thank you all for joining us this evening as we commemorate the ascension of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, this, so this coming Sunday is actually the last Sunday of the season of Easter, but again, we always celebrate Easter. That's why we have church every single Sunday. Um, so may you go in peace this evening. Serve the Lord. Alleluia. Christ is arisen and ascended. He is risen and ascended indeed. Alleluia. Have a blessed evening.